Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Sabbari um, ahir. So welcome. Uh, this is the distributed CMS um, from system to stack. It's a real pleasure to be here in Pune and to join you all. Um, this keynote is about uh, distributed CMS, but it's also a little bit of a personal journey. And um, I want to start just briefly by beginning in uh, Hindi. My name is Preston Sohe. I'm from America. I've been here for three years ago. But, wow, I've been here for a long time. I've been here for a long time. It's a real pleasure to be back here. And when Prasad extended the uh, invitation to me, I said, OK. <laughs> so um, I'm a product strategist. I Gatsby man kam karta hoon, product manager hoon Gatsby man. Or ye kitab. I've also written this book, Decoupled Drupal in Practice. Or muche thori thori Hindi aati hai. Or Marathi or Konkani sikh raha hoon, lekin bolne koshi. I'm not going to try to speak in. Uh, Marathi or in Konkani today. Let me start with a little bit of my history. Um, and if you don't know what Gatsby is, um, Gatsby is a modern framework for developing websites. And I'll talk a little bit more about what Gatsby is later in this presentation. But one of the things that Gatsby has that might be interesting to all of you is that there is first class support for Drupal. And it's getting better every single day. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a sprint happening just right now at this moment in Atlanta uh, on Drupal and Gatsby to improve the way in which Drupal and Gatsby integrate together. So um, please uh, take a look at the project. Um, we also have a preview product available, and I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Um, as I mentioned, I'm also the writer of this book. Um, I have two copies of this book today that I'm going to give away to members of the audience. Um, if you already have this book, please do not try to take another copy. This is for somebody who has not <laughs> purchased a copy of this book yet. Um, it's a book about decoupled Drupal. I know there's a t that's a topic that is uh, very much uh, of interest this weekend. So here's what I want to cover today. Um, right now, you know, thinking about the way that uh, Drupal is going and the way that the CMS world is going, I remember three years ago when I was here for DrupalCon Asia in Mumbai, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of momentum. People were very, very thrilled about Drupal. But it seems like perhaps we've lost a little bit of that energy a little bit. You know, I think that Drupal has changed, and it's not something that we should hide from. It's not something that we should stay away from. I want to talk about the history of the CMS and how it has influenced Drupal's progression. I also want to talk about what I call the distributed CMS, which is where I see the next step after decoupled Drupal. This is distributed Drupal. What is that and how do we think about it and why is it so important to all of us to be thinking about this right now and be ready for the future? But first, um, a little bit of history about me. Um, as I mentioned, I uh, fell in love with India when I was here in Mumbai three years ago. And I was looking through my photos last night, and I said, I need to share some of the places that I've been and how much uh, uh, India has meant to me. Um, this is a country that has done so much for me and has really uh, shown me a lot of love. And um, I'm so glad to be back here today. Um, Mumbai is one of my favorite cities in the entire world, um, as is Pune. And uh, I remember when I was standing on Marine Drive, this is uh, at sunset, I just thought, you know, it's, it's an amazing place to be, and it's amazing that there is such a vibrant and amazing community here uh, in India. This is my favorite place in Mumbai. I don't know if, uh, it's, you know, if you've been here before, but this is Banganga. It's located uh, actually um, near Breach Candy in Mumbai, and it's uh, one of my favorite places because it's, it's calm and it's very peaceful. Um, and very close by to this place, actually, is um, the Sophia Center for Women uh, Studies. 
And this, uh, this street that this building is on really affected me a lot because there were a lot of very interesting people that were depicted along this wall. Uh, um, you know, many people that are very important to the history of modern India. Um, and thinking about this, I realized that, you know, there are so many things that the community here has contributed to the greater, the greater global community of Drupal. It's one of those things where I wonder, why don't more of us come here and see for ourselves what India is all about? I also spent some time, uh, thanks to the Pune community here, I went to Sinhagad Fort. This is, these are all my photos, by the way. Um, and uh, I had an amazing time here. And, and this was something that has stayed in my heart ever since. Um, also, my last day in Pune, I spent uh, up on Parvati Hill, which is actually very close to here. And I'm hoping that I'll get a chance to go back and see another sunset uh, over there this weekend. So um, also, I had a chance to visit the QED offices when I was here in Pune. This is three years ago. Teen saal se pehle. <laughs> it's amazing how much QED has grown. And um, once again, just want to thank them, uh, obviously, for the sponsorship of this conference. So let's ask the hard question. Many of us talk about Drupal. We talk about the features of Drupal. We talk about how new Drupal is and all these amazing things. But we have to ask ourselves a very tough question. Is Drupal truly as attractive and as exciting as it once was? Today, we have many new technologies that we work with, like React, Gatsby, Vue.js, even Gridsome, if you've heard of that. And many of these technologies have us rethinking our relationship with Drupal. And for me, personally, you know, when I go back to my thinking about Drupal and the way that it was for me, it was truly like a bit of a relationship, like a love affair. You know, you start to work with this system that you really enjoy. It's a really amazing thing, but it's really frustrating, right? It's just like the beginning of any relationship. You have a lot of problems in the beginning. You have a lot of issues, but you work them out. It gets better, it gets worse. And for me, Drupal has always had that kind of mentality. It's been something that uh, is, is very, very interesting for me in terms of how these conflicts have arisen. And so today, what I wanted to do is to use, actually, a Hindi film to illustrate a little bit of the narrative that we might think about with Drupal. And so I want to ask right now for a copy of this book, which movie from last year is going to be the undercurrent of my talk today? Any answer, go ahead. Huh, huh, a hint? Okay, so the hint is it's a film that has Anushka Sharma. Suitaga, very good. So, <laughs> who answered that by the way? Who was that? Okay, this is yours. So, Suitaga, uh, Mad in India, right? <laughs> this is one of my favorite movies. Um, I've seen this movie probably about 10 times. Um, it's, it's truly an amazing movie, and um, if you haven't seen it, please see it. There won't be any spoilers in this movie. But I did want to show one quick clip from this movie. Uh, you might have heard this song before. And these lyrics, for me, really illustrate kind of what Drupal is like. You know, it's hot, it's cold, it's frustrating but it's really addictive, right? It's something that you really enjoy working with. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let's see if I can get the audio to work. So how many of you felt this way with Drupal when you started, right? <laughs> sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's difficult, but it's hot, it's a curse sometimes, but it's a really amazing system. And that's what Drupal really has been 
for many of us. But a lot of us are feeling this same kind of fever, the same kind of interest and passion in other technologies. How many of you have tried React or Angular or some of these other technologies? As you can see, we all have other technologies that we want to work with. And the question is, are we cheating on Drupal in a sense? <laughs> are, we, are we moving away from our loyalty to Drupal? Well, when you think about it today, the whole reason why we're doing this, the whole reason why we look at some of these technologies like React and Gatsby is because we want better solutions. We want better outcomes for our stakeholders, for our customers, for everyone that we build websites for today. And one example of this is infrastructure. One of the biggest problems today that we find in the CMS landscape is that the TCO, the total cost of ownership is increasing, which means that the amount that we have to spend to host our websites is very large and very significant. It's very expensive. And many large Drupal sites that we work with today are now more than a million dollars per year. This is a very expensive thing for many users, especially Drupal users here in India who have to pay a lot of money for hosting. And it's clear that there's a very big movement towards serverless solutions. I know many of us in the room have worked with serverless solutions, and they're very cheap compared to what is on offer today in the market. Another problem is resourcing. One of the biggest issues that we have here is that CMS developers are in very high demand. Drupal developers here in India are in very high demand. WordPress developers are in very high demand, but they're very expensive as well. And finding JavaScript developers is proving to be sometimes much easier. Um, in America, for example, in Europe, we have a lot of examples of this where many people are shifting towards React, shifting towards these uh, technologies and being able to find jobs or, or find people to hire much more easily. And it's specialization that is very difficult, right? I mean, Drupal requires a lot of knowledge. You need to understand how Drupal works and the expertise can be a very long time to build. Also the flexibility. One of the things that we know is that monolithic CMS is not actually very flexible. Um, one of the things that we know is that if you want to integrate a third-party service, if you want to integrate a CRM system, if you want to integrate some other kind of e-commerce solution, for example, with Drupal, it's actually a very challenging thing to do. And these, this idea of interchangeable parts, of uh, being able to take one service out, replace it with another, is something that's very influential today and not very easy with Drupal uh, these days. But is that a huge problem? Well, let's go into some of the other issues that we find today with Drupal and the old CMS world, the legacy CMS world. The first is performance. Today, many of us are building apps or chatbots or mobile applications in addition to the websites that we already build on a daily basis. But these expectations of our users have come to outpace what we have. And they don't have things like prefetching or lazy loading for images or infinite scrolls that load automatically. These are things that a lot of users have come to expect, but that Drupal doesn't really do a whole lot of in terms of really easily enabling those things. And performance optimization is a very important concern. Also security. It seems like every single week or every month, we have a new vulnerability that's announced for Drupal WordPress. And it's solely because of the fact that so many people are using Drupal, so many people are using WordPress. And that's something that we have to think about as well. Is that something that we should maybe address as a community? So decoupled architectures, as we know, can actually help improve security. There's going to be a talk later today about decoupled Drupal around some of these topics. And there's a lot of reasons why this is a very compelling architecture. So the question I want to ask today is, we have developers now who are moving towards these other technologies, React, Gatsby, and it's, you know, it's something that we can't ignore. It's something that is important for us to consider. But we still have to serve all of the needs of people who are working with these systems, right? We have to think about all of the people who are editing content in the CMS, who are working with some of these marketing tools that we also enable for our, develop for our, for our users. So the question is, is it possible to actually satisfy the needs of, these, of all these people? And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, you know, is the content management system in decline? Is it dead? Marvia, right? Is it something that we need to maybe say is part of history now? And so I'm going to be asking some very tough questions today. And so another quick video here. This is my favorite part of the song right here.
Bumpy roads ahead, right? So we have to move slowly and carefully because we don't know what could happen to Drupal if we move too fast or if we do things a little bit too quickly because we do have to keep on honoring our commitment to Drupal and uh, what we have here. So I wanna ask this question, but it's gonna be a difficult question. It's a question that I've asked many times this year. It's a question that I've asked in the past as well, but it's a question that I think we all have to think about and I wanna offer a solution today. I wanna to offer a way that this will actually be fixed because I believe actually that the CMS as we know it is not dead. And I believe that solutions like Drupal are not things that are gonna be in the history books. A CMS renaissance is coming, a rebirth of CMSs is coming. And I swear it'll be better than Game of Thrones. <laughs> so let's go back into time and look at some of the history. In the early 2000s, we had the first wave of the CMS. And these were basically kind of like static site generators, the things that we use today, Jekyll, things like that. And there was some rudimentary templating going on. You know, oftentimes you would have different parts of the page that you could write for, different components. And the way that we would actually interact with these systems was very rudimentary because everything was contained in a single box, as a single layer. There was no difference between how you would interact with the systems. But the difference here is that there was actually no interactive behavior. So you couldn't do anything like click on a button and see an update automatically appear. Here's an example of vignette, for example, um, which many of us have seen uh, if we've worked with CMSs for a long time in the past. And as you can see, it's something that you see, it's just a single application. It's not something that is really very complex. And we see, of course, the uh, very old uh, kind of formatting editor there that you can see, um, some very rudimentary fields, very similar to how Drupal still works today. And as you can see, this model has been something that we've adopted for a very long time, ever since the 1990s. And you also had this idea of a file system as well, right? Many of those systems had a built-in file explorer, a built-in hierarchical tree that you could explore with all of the different files that were involved inside. But as you can see, the websites that you made with this were not very good. <laughs> a lot of these sites were actually not very well built. They were also not really great user experiences. And that's why we actually see the second wave of CMSs appear, where a lot of these editors and a lot of these marketers wanna have a little bit more control over what's going on. And at the same time, developers have a much richer experience as well, because now we're actually doing dynamic server-side work on the CMS. We're seeing server-side applications that are not just a single layer, but actually an abstraction above the database layer all the way to the templating layer. So you have a theme layer now. You have this idea of using querying systems, a query abstraction layer, and maybe even some rudimentary interactive behavior like Drupal's Ajax API, which is one of the things that has led to Drupal's success over the years. So here's an example of WordPress, which falls into this generation of CMSs. Um, and also, of course, Drupal. Um, these are both CMSs that have been around for a long time and they still have a lot of staying power because of the fact that they enable such rich interactions between developers and editors. And that's changed a little bit in recent years. We had WordPress Calypso released about three years ago, which was really an illustration of how you can work with a new interface that still relies on the same CMS. And we start to see gradually that the, there's a divergence between the ways in which developers wanna work with the platform and the ways in which editors wanna work with the platform. You start to see a little bit of fraying in the fabric, to once again go back to Suitaga, uh, a little bit of the fraying in the fabric that you have to repair. So let's talk about headless, let's talk about decoupled, because I know many of you have started to work with decoupled Drupal. How many of you are working on decoupled Drupal, by the way? Uh, we're using APIs, working with other JavaScript frameworks, okay. So this is really what I call the third wave or the third generation of the CMS. 
Now, what happened is the fraying fabric becomes completely torn. Now developers are saying, we don't want to work with these things anymore. We don't like Twig. We don't like PHP template. We don't want to write PHP. It's a very, very old and archaic approach. So we want to actually completely decouple and separate the architecture. And for the first time, because of Node.js, because of the availability of server-side JavaScript, you now have the option to do this. And Drupal actually fell into this a little bit accidentally. Web services in Drupal, the APIs, like JSON API, GraphQL, all these APIs that now you can interact with were kind of an accident in Drupal. They were really meant for things like content staging, synchronization across sites, um, multi-sites, and not really for this idea of using a JavaScript framework in front. And so this really kind of fell into our community's lap by accident. But there's also really interesting problems that surface, right? Because one of the things that we really enjoy about Drupal is the fact that you can go onto any page, click that edit tab, and you're right in there in the content editing interface. But that's not so possible anymore. And a lot of CMSs have tried to fix this. One example is Prismic, which allows for you as a JavaScript developer to actually insert an edit button in a section of the page and go directly to the CMS. So an example of this is Contentful. Uh, Contentful is a proprietary CMS, it's closed source, but what's really amazing about it is that they've adopted a lot of the good ideas that we have in Drupal. For example, they have the idea of a completely flexible custom content model. But this content model is not something that is visually represented for the editor in a very clear way. It's something that you actually have to consume as a developer. And as you can see, there's a tab up there that says JSON preview. It's not very useful for somebody who wants to just edit that content and see it previewed. Same thing with Prismic. Prismic is the same exact idea, uh, very powerful CMS as well, but also has the problem of being closed source and proprietary. And this begs another question, right? Do we, do we see as well the end of the history of the open source CMS potentially surfacing as well? Uh, Sanity.io, another example of this, uh, very powerful CMS as well. And of course, now with the evolution of some of the older CMSs like WordPress and Drupal, we see headless WordPress, thanks to WPAPI and decoupled Drupal as well. So um, for those of you who don't know, decoupled Drupal is the use of Drupal as a content service for consumer applications, which means that you're not using Drupal for its normal purposes. You're using Drupal actually just for the data piece, just to send that data out into other applications and use it in a different way. And what that does is that completely undermines the ability for the developer and the editor to have a very clear relationship with regards to how they work together. Now, the evolution of decoupled Drupal, as I just mentioned, was, was really catalyzed because of developments like Node.js. The creation of Node.js really led to a lot of innovation in the JavaScript world. And also the fact that people wanted to build other things besides um, just websites. For example, I know that a lot of folks in here, uh, the, you know, the folks at QED42, at Accelerant, at Valuebound, you all build things like chatbots and other things, mobile applications, desktop applications that aren't related to the website. And that requires decoupled Drupal. And now we're applying that also to regular websites as well, things that we would have built normally in Drupal. But there's a problem here that we have to address, which is the fact that now that we're splitting everything into separate pieces, we have to figure out how they fit back together. We have to figure out how they actually come back together like Legos. And that's where interchangeable parts comes into play. We all uh, have probably studied that in industry, uh, if you look at the history of industry over the last 200 years, it, there was a really large change at, a, at the turn of the century, right before the 20th century, where finally there was a development of interchangeable parts, where you could actually take uh, different pieces of machinery and they would still work together even if you had different combinations of parts. And this is something that is a very important idea for us here in Drupal, because we've never actually thought of Drupal that way really until recently. We've thought of Drupal as just being that one big box. You take it, you take the box, you put it somewhere else, you put it on someone's site, you put it on a server, and there's your entire ecosystem. But now, with this idea of interchangeable parts, we have to consider that how do we fit in with these other tools, these other technologies? And is that actually potentially a very good thing for us as a community that will lead to a lot of innovation? 
And there's a lot of issues, a lot of reasons why people like this model, right? First is there, there's pipeline development, which means that front-end teams and back-end teams can work separately. So you can have a JavaScript team that's working separately. And if you can actually get to the point where they're working on two separate code bases, two separate GitHub repositories, then you don't have any of this blocking development that oftentimes happens. You also have this idea of interchangeable presentation layers which means that you can take any kind of front end that you put in front of Drupal, take it out and replace it with something else. And this is really the beginning of interchangeable parts in Drupal. Also, there's a notion of API convergence, right? This idea that if you have a shared API that you can agree on between your front end developers and your back end developers, you don't actually need to block each other or have to rely on each other's work. You just agree on what the specification for the API is gonna be and you build towards that exact same model and converge on where you're going. Also, updates become much easier. Um, you know, we all have experienced a version upgrade in Drupal, I'm sure, where it takes the entire site down and we have to spend many, many hours actually making sure that things work again. And if you de decouple your Drupal site, you can actually go ahead and update things separately. So you don't have to worry as much about things breaking necessarily. Maybe you don't need to worry about the front end breaking on Drupal. Maybe you can just update your versions of JavaScript and it works just fine. But that's the decoupled world, right? That's how people are working today. Um, many of the development models that you see now, the frameworks you see operating in the US and in Europe and in India as well, are all focused on this idea where we want to have convergence, we want to have two separate parts. But actually, you know, I would argue that we're entering the fourth generation of CMSs. We're actually entering a world where it's not just going to be two pieces. It's not just going to be the foundation of Drupal and another technology. It's actually going to be a constellation of different technologies and approaches. The difference between the decoupled CMS and the distributed CMS is that now you have full decoupling of the presentation layer. So before, for example, within your uh, React application that you're building on Drupal, you just have one React application. Uh, maybe you have a Gatsby application, but the thing is, it's just one single application that is on the page. Nothing is actually in there that's different. But with the distributed CMS, with this idea of what's called the content mesh, you actually enable not just one single technology to be on that page. You can have actually have many different services, many different uh, technologies that surface on that page. Let me, let me talk about what that actually means. So about 10 to f about 10 years ago, uh, maybe a little less than 10 years ago, we had what was called the microservices revolution. And this was a server-side revolution that really changed the way in which the back end worked for a lot of technologies. And this idea of service orchestration came about, um, where we said, we have all these different back end services that have different databases, that have different abstraction layers. We have to figure out how to make them all work together in a very uniquely uh, refined way that will actually work in the future. And from this idea of a service mesh, right, which allows for you to create all of these different, uh, um, all of these different services and orchestrate them, we actually now have the same idea on the front end as well, where we can pair services with a front end layer that's actually completely agnostic to what it is that's underneath. You don't care in the front end what's underneath. And that's actually the real reason why a lot of people like to use React and like to use some of these JavaScript libraries is because you don't really care about what's underneath. You can consume from any API you want. And that's a very compelling idea that a lot of people have come to really appreciate. So what I mean by this is that as a result of using this idea of the content mesh where the page is completely separate from any notion of what data it relies on, any, any notion of a service dependency or a data dependency, it's just its own thing that you can finally completely think of as its own being. The page becomes decoupled as well. And that's a very crucial point. It's not just that we're taking the architecture and decoupling it. It's the page that we're splitting up into parts and enabling in a very rich way. Let's look at an example. So in legacy CMSs like Drupal, in traditional CMSs, Oftentimes, if you want to build e-commerce, or if you want to build search, or if you want to build forms, you have to use what's in Drupal. You have to use what's in the form API. You have to use Ubercart or uh, Drupal Commerce, or you have to use something like Drupal's uh, native search capabilities. 
But the problem with this is what happens when somebody stops maintaining that module, right? We've all been there where we've used a module and we know that we want to use that functionality, but suddenly it all goes away and we can't actually use it anymore. The simplicity is a big problem. When we hand off a website to a customer and they take it and they run for several years, they come back and they say, what happened to the e-commerce tool? I can't use it anymore. And suddenly you have to figure out what to do from there. Do you write custom code? Or do you figure out some way to embed a custom solution? It's a very challenging thing for us to think about. And this is where technologies like Gatsby and some of the amazing work that content mesh technologies have started to work with, that's where these come into play. Because the biggest issue that we have is that Drupal has its own way of doing all of these things. And if we decouple, we still have to rely on all of those things. But there's an explosion of new startups, an explosion of new technologies, an explosion of new open source libraries as well that allow for you to build all of these things on your own, on a site, and change them out whenever you want to. So let's say, for example, that you have an authentication service through Auth0. Well, Auth0 goes bust next week. Auth0 completely collapses. You can use a different authentication provider. Um, Snipcart is another example. You know, you don't like Snipcart anymore, you can change it out for a different provider. So for developers, this is a very compelling idea because no longer is it something where we have to rely on our internal community to figure out um, a new solution. We can actually go and rely on external solutions as well. And Gatsby does this very well because we have this notion of agnosticism with technology where anything that you want to put into the page, you can, and you can change it out at any time you wish. So this is how the evolution of the CMS is occurring, right? Right now in the, you know, the, the monolithic CMS, the way that we traditionally work with the CMS is reliant on Drupal technologies, is reliant on Drupal maintainers, is reliant on PHP. When we start to decouple, we still have to use all of those capabilities in Drupal. We still have to use all of those things that are available in Drupal, but it's just in Gatsby this time. Now with the distributed CMS, you can use any service you want to you can use any collection of services you want to, change them out, change the list, do whatever you want with them, and proceed how you want to. For developers, as you can imagine, this is extremely exciting because it means that you can now do anything you want to. You can write an, authentic an authentication provider in Go and write a JavaScript integration with that, and you don't have to write anything in PHP ever again. So um, the co-founder, there's a, a, a really amazing series of blog posts by the co-founder of Gatsby and our chief operating officer, Sam Pagwat, who uh, wrote about what's the, what the content mesh actually involves. What is the content mesh and how does Gatsby enable that? The key thing to remember here is that that central piece, that purple uh, uh, shape there that you can see, that's where all of these services are coming in. And Gatsby plays very nicely with all of them, with plugins and various integrations. And now many other technologies and many other communities are beginning to adopt this same exact model. And it's a very compelling one, not only for developers, but also for marketers. So what is Gatsby? Just because I've been talking about Gatsby and nobody, uh, I didn't actually explain what it is. So Gatsby is a free and open source uh, framework that is based on React and it's really intended for building blazing fast websites. Um, if you've heard of Impossible Foods, Impossible Foods is a creator of um, completely uh, 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 vegetarian meats. And um, Impossible Foods is a site that's built on Gatsby. Um, also, there's a product available that we've been building. It's in, pr it's in beta right now, um, Gatsby Preview, which works very well with Drupal, by the way, um, if you want to take a look. And I'll show very quickly uh, later on uh, what that looks like. So Gatsby right now is the most comprehensive glass, the most comprehensive upper layer for what I call the content management stack. So we've been talking about the content management system for many, many, many years, but it's no longer useful to talk about it that way because we now have all of, all of these services that are part of this content mesh. It's now a content management stack. We have to think about the architecture holistically and not just as a single layer. So some of the advantages of this are that well, you know, obviously with Gatsby, Gatsby is a serverless technology, which means that you can use serverless hosting solutions, which are by and large much cheaper than the traditional LAMP hosting solutions or the traditional, uh, um, you know, uh, you know s s online server kind of uh, uh, solutions that are available for hosting. And we know that solutions like Netlify and Zite are very cheap, 
Um, you know, usually, actually, you can host pretty much any site you want to for free. Uh, my site, for example, uh, if you go to Preston.so, that's a Gatsby site that also consumes Drupal. But that site, I actually don't pay any money for that hosting at all. Um, it's hosted for free on Netlify, and I use free Pantheon hosting um, with Drupal, uh, where I don't actually need to worry about paying any money at all. Until, of course, you all visit the site, and then I have thousands of visitors, and now I have to pay more money. <laughs> so, what about resourcing? Well, as we have ex explored, you know, this idea of this diversification of technologies is something that means that these developers are much easier to find. So people who are building in React, people who are building in JavaScript, it opens the door. If you're building these architectures, it opens the door to a lot of different people that you can now turn to and contract for help. In terms of flexibility, this idea of interchangeable parts, the distributed CMS um, is flexible by design because you have this notion that the page itself is decoupled, the presentation layer is decoupled, and you can plug and play whatever you want to. And now you can see that a lot of these startups that are really having a lot of success, like Algolia for search, Snipcart for e-commerce, Typeform for form handling, Segment for analytics, a lot of them are actually more powerful than Drupal's form API, or Drupal's native search, or uh, Elasticsearch, right? Or Typeform, or, or um, uh, Google Analytics, for example, in Drupal. And so if you are a developer and you're looking at some of these solutions, you have to consider, well, how, how do we integrate that well with Drupal without completely changing the way that we have to build our Drupal sites? Performance is probably the most important consideration for many of our uh, customers. And as you can see, you know, one of the things that's really great about Gatsby is that it works completely offline. You can do anything you want to with, uh, uh, go into very, very slow networks um, with a lot of network latency, um, but it will still work. And there's also full support for accessibility um, and a lot of interactivity that's possible through link prefetching and a lot of those things that are now table stakes, a lot of those things that are now basic features for JavaScript applications, but not so much yet for Drupal with the exception of solutions like TurboLinks and Refreshless. Um, now, thanks to serverless hosting and, and CDNs and a lot of the ways in which we're now moving a lot of our work to the edge, it's now possible to achieve a lot of performance benefits through this work. And, of course, security. Now, this is one of the biggest reasons why people are adopting what I call the, the distributed CMS or the content mesh or the content management stack, is that when you actually have everything in a single Drupal site, you only have one single big box to poke a hole in and access um, and actually uh, get into. When you have multiple services that you're relying on, if you have multiple startups you're relying on, if you have multiple services you're relying on, multiple technologies, this becomes a lot harder. How do you hack uh, Auth0, right, when it's not even hosted on the same place as your Drupal site? How do you hack your Drupal CMS, for example, if you can't even access it publicly? One of the most interesting things that's happening today is a lot of Drupal users and a lot of Drupal uh, companies are now actually providing a private version of the Drupal CMS to the point where there is no online place where you can access the Drupal CMS. It's all, all behind a firewall, all behind a local domain. Nobody can access it apart from your employees. And that means actually that it's impossible for you to access that data and access the private information of your users. So you can delegate all of this security, uh, all of these attack vectors, these, these potential vectors for vulnerabilities out to these other services and limit your exposure, your, your exposure just to the pieces that you know are gonna be the most important. And that's one of the reasons why this has become so powerful. So as you can see, when we evolve like this over time, there's a pretty big elephant in the room, which is that, well, th what does this mean for Drupal? You know, is this something where Drupal's importance is being reduced a lot? I don't believe so. You know, because all of us have customers who really love Drupal. We have editors that like to work in Drupal. We know that Drupal has very powerful capabilities. Um, you know, I mean, we just heard, for example, that one of the biggest reasons why people like to use Drupal is because of that very amazing power that it has. Having Unicode support for Marathi, for example. It's a very, very important thing that we have to consider. So I actually don't think it's a bad thing for Drupal. But what it does mean is that we can enable a much richer kind of functionality. We can enable a variety of different possibilities that weren't available before through this model. 
And if you think about this, it actually makes a whole lot of sense. You know, The ways in which we actually built CMS dependent sites is actually really not that interesting. You know, when you think about it, I actually believe that maybe the CMS came into being a little too early. It almost evolved too early. It originated too early because a lot of these architectural ideas would have really reinvented the way that the CMS operated uh, very quickly. So once again, showing this quick kind of timeline of how over the course of time, a lot of uh, uh, Drupal users are evolving into this kind of paradigm. It's a very interesting approach. And the thing that's really amazing about this as well is that when you think about this in the context of decoupled Drupal as well, and using Drupal as that central API, it becomes a really compelling idea if you want to do a lot of experimentation with other front ends. If you have other teams, for example, if you have a large collection of websites that you're building on your marketing team and you want to have a variety of different solutions that you're using, you can see that there's a lot of ways now that Drupal can work with these different ideas. You just have to figure out how to make the developers happy in this way. Now, I've been focusing a lot on developers but I haven't really been focusing much on the marketers, and I do want to uh, dive into that in a little bit. But this is kind of the way that a content management stack looks, right? We're using Drupal only for that decoupled API layer, that kind of data layer that gives us what we need, and that editorial interface that our content editors like to use. But above that, we have all of the third-party services that we can interchange and take out and replace and, and, and put in. and um, then on top, we have something like Gatsby or Gridsum or some of these other solutions um, that enable this agnostic glass, this idea of a content mesh, this idea of a completely agnostic front end. So the new content management system, the new CMS, is not a single contiguous system. The content management stack is actually distributed across many different locations. Consider, for example, that Algolia might have a server in South America, auth zero might have something in India. So you might be relying on services from a variety of different locations with a variety of different uh, a collection of teams. And it's very multifaceted, which means that a lot of these diverse solutions are very different from one another, but they enable a very rich uh, range of possibilities for your architecture. So the third way was about decoupling CMS architectures, just splitting from the front end to the back end, just tearing the fabric like that into two halves. But the fourth wave, is really about how we can take that fabric and actually do many different things with it and put in different patches, different embroidery, put in different things that we might see. The fourth wave is truly about decoupling presentation layers. It's about decoupling the front end itself. And now we're seeing more and more granularity in how we're working with these architectures. So. Um, yeah, as I said, the third wave is about interchangeable presentation layers. It's about changing out the front end for something else. You want to use Angular, use that. You want to use Gatsby, use that. But the fourth wave is really going to be about what is on the page itself. Let me take that little search bar from Algolia, put it on my site. Let me take that little form from uh, Typeform and put it on my site. And it all works together in a really seamless way without any performance drawbacks at all. So what does this mean for our customers? What does this mean for editors? What does this mean for developers? How does this change our thinking? How does this change our world? Well, if you think about it, there's a lot of problems. And I've talked about this very issue many times. But what's great about Drupal is that it provides an excellent editorial experience. And we want to keep enabling that. We want our editors to stay in Drupal. They're used to it. They like it. They might actually really enjoy some of the, some of the solutions that are available, like multilingual, for example. But the problem is they don't really have much access to being able to see what's on the glass, what's in that front end layer. And the marketers, of course, are working primarily with these third party services, but it's still the developers only that have that front facing experience where they can really interact with the front end site. So we at Gatsby have actually worked on how to fix this problem, which is that how do we, how do we re-enable what was possible before in a monolithic environment where a lot of these editors could actually go in and preview their site really easily, right? In Drupal 7, it was very easy, right? Uh, my client over here would be able to go in and click on that preview button in Drupal and see the content in context. Not so possible anymore when you're decoupling or when you're actually using a content mesh. So in the distributed CMS world, well, all the editors can keep their existing editorial interfaces I just mentioned. 
Um, for example, uh, with the new admin UI interface um, led by the admin UI and JavaScript modernization, modernization team, um, this is amazing. This, you, you, you can now actually keep all of your same interfaces. It's, keep, it's continuing to improve. It's a lot of improvements that are being made. And you can always maintain that same editorial interface. You don't have to discard it. But for editors, this is not so easy, right? Because let's go back one. If you look at this, all right, I see this. But what happens when I click on that preview button? I don't see the result as it appears in Gatsby. I don't see the result as it appears in React. I don't see the result as it appears in JavaScript. So diversifying into these multiple front ends for editors can be a very challenging proposition because they don't really know how they can interact with this in a very compelling way. And that's where preview comes in. At Gatsby over the last year, we've been building a product called Gatsby Preview, which enables you to actually finally access that piece that was missing from everyone's workflows before. Now, as the editor, I can click on a preview button in my Drupal site and actually see it appear in my Gatsby site. That's a really amazing thing. It's, that's something that was not available before, um, and it's really an amazing feature that demos very well as well. So here's an example. Now, um, what's happening here is that we're adding an image to a content node within Drupal, saving, and as you can see, the preview on the right side, which is the Gatsby site, updates automatically. Now, uh, there's the Gatsby Drupal working group right now. I highly encourage you to join the hash Gatsby channel on uh, the Drupal Slack, um, as well as to follow the project as it's going on. We have a very active working group right now in Drupal that is also on Spectrum. And this uh, is a very powerful thing because what we're going to be able to enable within the next couple of weeks, this is in progress right now, is actually to have a preview button in Drupal natively that will take you to your Gatsby site and you can see your live preview there. And any change you make in Drupal will be updated automatically. You no longer have to click on that preview button every single time to see it appear within your Drupal site natively. You can see it appear on your Gatsby site instantaneously. And it's a very uh, impressive thing. Um, I'm going to be giving a session about this, by the way, at DrupalCon Amsterdam, um, as well as at Gatsby Days London, um, if you are uh, planning to attend those. Um, and um, we're very excited about this feature. So that's how we're going to be improving the experience for editors in this whole landscape. And this will unlock a whole lot of possibility for our users. And now, with marketing technologies that can be interchangeable, now our marketers as well, our marketing teams, can access these other services really easily. And diversifying these services with flexible options means that they can choose their own services and say, hey, I like Snipcart, let's put that in, and the developer just has to integrate with that in Gatsby. It's a very, very quick process, very easy, and something that really wasn't so easy before. So this is how the new world is going to look. Um, and you know, Drupal is going to still play a very, very important role. And actually, you know, Obviously, you can see that there's only a small piece of this diagram that has Drupal in it, but you can take up a whole lot of your actual interface in Gatsby, no matter how you want to look at it. But you can also pair it with other services, depending on what those services are good for. And this is kind of the point at which I want to bring this back to this question, right? By using these other technologies, by using things that are not Drupal, are we, are we cheating on Drupal? Is this, you know, are we no longer in a relationship that is working out? Actually, I think this is a really, very good thing for Drupal. Because now we as developers can use what we enjoy as technologies. And we do enjoy Drupal. All of us do like Drupal. But we can also learn other things. We can also begin to explore other technologies as well. And for developers, right, as we diversify our skills and as we build more of our capabilities in ourselves, that's a very important prerogative, and we have to keep our skills current and keep our skills mature. And this is a very important thing for us to keep in mind in the future. So yeah, it's true that you know maybe potentially uh, uh, we are looking at other technologies, looking at other things, but it's OK. It's actually perfectly fine, because the content management stack opens the door to the exploration of passion tech. You can explore that thing you've been looking at for a while. You want to work with that in Drupal. You don't know how to fit that in. Well, now you can with a lot of these approaches in the distributed CMS landscape. And it really means that you can experience that same passion you had for Drupal with other technologies without actually cheating 
on Drupal at all. It's almost uh, actually really kind of strange to say, but um, it's something that really is uh, uh, something that we can really experience. So what does this mean for Drupal, ultimately? Um, and I know for many of you, it's probably a surprise that I'm working with a technology like Gatsby. I've moved over into this world, but I'm still working with Drupal daily. I still work on my Drupal site. I still use Drupal 8. I still like Twig. I still do all of that. But I also like to explore these other te uh, technologies as well. Nothing is really going to change, right? The CMS will keep evolving, and Drupal will keep evolving with it. But what we're going to see more and more of is this idea of distribution, this idea where you no longer have a single place where that's your CMS, just like those old screenshots from the 1990s. It's not going to be like that anymore. It's going to be a much richer array, a much more diverse set of functionality that you can work with. And this is what I want to end with, is that we as a Drupal community have, have always innovated in very unexpected ways. We've always explored new ideas. As I mentioned earlier, web services, APIs, happen in Drupal pretty much by accident. Um, we adopted jQuery, for example, in, in, in the mid-2000s, and that became a very important step in Drupal's history. And we've developed different ways and different evolutions that have really grown our community in ways that we didn't expect. And so we as the community, we as contributors here, and I know that there's a session right after this about contribution to Drupal. I highly encourage you to go to that. And we as the community are going to distinguish Drupal in this new age. We're going to be the ones who will build this future, who will create this opportunity for ourselves moving forward. And I want to end with this clip, another song, another song from Suitaga. So we've truly made the Drupal machine into a person, and we have to keep on growing our being and our human that is the Drupal community um, with these approaches. So the decoupled CMS is only the first step. We have a coming revolution. We have to be prepared for it. We have to work on it together. We have to collaborate as a team and patch and create all of these new fabrics that will distinguish Drupal in the future. So I believe that this new paradigm will mark a rebirth for Drupal. It'll rejuvenate our community. It'll be a rebirth for web development. You can see it already happening right now with things like Live Preview, with Drupal and Gatsby. And it'll be a rebirth for digital content. You'll be able to work with content in ways that you didn't expect. Editors will be able to have new experiences. Marketers will be able to have new experiences. And for me, I think that is really what's exciting about this whole idea. So I asked the question at the very beginning of the session, is Drupal dead? Is Drupal in decline? Are we seeing the CMS as we know it go away? As you can see, this is just the beginning for Drupal. We're just starting. This is an amazing kind of future that we can build for Drupal together, and it's going to be an amazing time. If you want more information about this, I've written a blog post about some of this information um, on my website at Preston.so. Um, I also have Twitter, at Preston.so. There will be more content about this that I'll be publishing soon, um, so please take a look at uh, this blog post if you want to learn more. And thank you very much. Bohut